Hello, everybody. Happy Get Crackin' on Christmas. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me on this Friday morning. So excited. I feel like it's been a long time since I've been live. I don't know. It just feels like a long time. So I just want to let you know we got a few visitors during this Get Crackin' on Christmas. Uh, you can see I got Mr. Harley here on my studio table. He is going to be supervising and making sure I do all the things correctly. And you might hear some noises in the background and you might even see a little peek of my friend Josie. She is visiting. Um, she lives up in New Hampshire and she's a teacher and it's school break. So she's down here helping me get some stuff done in the Creative Chick studio. Fun little fun fact is um, she's going to be working for me this summer and we're very excited about that and we hope that it'll blossom into some more excitement so hello everybody thank you so much linda hi jen hi brianne hi sarah oh we got andrea from switzerland and we have melly from italy hello guys so um let me just do a quick recap of what get cracking on christmas is all about hello jennifer the owner of Newton's Nook. Thanks for popping in. I'm so excited. Clearly, Jennifer, I have a stash of Newton's Nook that needs to be loved in my Christmas section because <laughs> I've been using Newton's Nook a lot lately. Um, so let me just give you guys a quick rundown of Get Cracking on Christmas in case this might be your first time joining me or maybe you're catching me on replay. Uh, so Get Cracking on Christmas is an initiative I started a few years ago because I was realizing I wasn't getting as many holiday cards created as I wanted to, although I was still buying all of the holiday stamps because we all know all the companies come out with such cute designs and we need it all. Um, and so it was just making me sad. One, I wasn't having time to send cards to friends and family. And two, I was buying products that I wasn't using. So um, actually, when I first started this, my friend Shari and I um, were kind of made it as a challenge to each other. So if you have a crafty friend and you want to challenge each other to do something, that's always a fun way to kind of hit a goal. But we just challenged each other that we would make one holiday card a month and share it on our blog. And then that kind of blossomed into me inviting some of my friends, Sharon and Libby and and then that kind of blossomed into some more. And so now I kind of just post on my own, but I encourage all of you guys to use the hashtag uh, get cracking on Christmas and share your cards throughout the year. Um, I know some people think it's pretty crazy that it's April and I'm like, let's make Christmas cards. But I just find that come the fall, especially um, in the U.S., you know, we have Halloween, then we have Thanksgiving, and then it's like, oh my gosh, my Christmas cards should be in the mail. And it's just a very busy time. And I just find that when it's busy like that, I'm not enjoying the process. And I think card making is very much a multi-step you know, beneficial thing. Um, part of it is it's really fun to buy all the supplies. Part of it is it's really fun to organize all the supplies. Part of it is the process of creating. And then part of it is the process of giving out your cards. So, and when I make a little bit of holiday cards all throughout the year, I find that I'm playing a little bit more with different techniques because I have more time. Um, I'm finding that I'm using my holiday supplies more that maybe haven't gotten any love um and I just I just enjoy the whole process a whole lot more so you might think I'm crazy that I'm doing them in April but um I know a lot of you appreciate it and have been joining me so these lives happen every month I hop on and I share with you how I made my card I don't expect you to have the exact supplies or do the exact thing that I'm doing but you can use this time to start working on your holiday cards as well so it's kind of like we're friends hanging out and crafting together Linda says yes it's April but there are snow pellets in the air Ooh. No more. No more snow pellets on Cape Cod, please. 
Uh, some of you guys know we just got back from vacation. We went to Punta Cana, and so I am like full-fledged ready for summer now. I don't want any more uh, cold, cold weather. So I am going to flip my screen. Let's see. I should have had it all set up, but I am going to flip my screen. Oh, before I flip my screen real quick, you guys, I want to um, just remind you that next weekend is um, Copic 101. So this is an online class that I am teaching, and I'm so excited about it. It's been many, many years in the making, um, and I have been coloring with Copic markers for well over 20 years, but I've also been teaching with Copic markers for well over 20 years, and I've learned from you guys where you're struggling, what you kind of need a little bit more help with, and I have come up with this online class, and part of the online class is you actually get a workbook shipped to you. So if you want to participate in the class live on May 6th, and you are watching me live right now on April 28th, or maybe later in the day on April 28th, um, you can still register for Copic 101 if you're in the U.S. and you want a workbook shipped to you. Um, basically, the ones that come in order today will get shipped tomorrow. And then after that, I can't guarantee you're going to have it in time. So, but that's okay as well, because with all of my online classes, you have access to the videos after the fact. Um, you can watch them at your leisure when it's convenient for you. So um, this is going to be an online class that I have available going forward, where the workbook will be shipped to you going forward. So um, but I just wanted to give one more little shout out. I did an email newsletter last night and got a bunch more orders in. Um, there's hundreds of us that are going to be coloring together on May 6th, and I cannot wait. Um, so this is the last little push to make sure you guys know to get that workbook in time. If you live in the U.S., you can still place an order today, April 28th, um, 2023. But after that, you can still place an order. It's just there's no guarantee you'll have the workbook in time for the live class. So I just wanted to give a little plug for that. I feel like um, even though, you know, I'm super excited for the class, there's just been a lot going on. Um, and I feel like I just haven't given as many plugs about it as I would normally. So, all right. Margo has a good question. Um, is it only for Copic markers or for any markers? So I would say that it is for any alcohol-based markers, Margo, and I am familiar with quite a few of the brands. However, I don't actively color with all of the brands, like as much as I do Copics, obviously. So many alcohol-based markers will work the same. Um, there are some pluses and minuses to all of the brands, even Copics. Um, so I'll only be able to answer specific questions about Copic markers and alcohol marker coloring. But let's say um, you have the Spectrum Noir markers you might have a question for me that I just might not know the answer because I don't color with them daily. So, but I really do think it's a good class for all alcohol-based markers. Even though I will be demoing with Copics and talking about Copics, um, I think it's a good, good class. So, yay. Hello, Brenda. Thanks for joining us for the first time. Uh, thank you, Miss Brianne, for popping in the links. I always appreciate you doing that. Paula, vacation was amazing. I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> and that is exactly what I needed. It's been a really kind of crazy couple months. And so I, my biggest concerns were, were am I going to read by the beach or am I going to read by the pool? That was about it. So it was awesome. Thank you for asking. Um, let's see. Um, will there be a workbook PDF to be able to print and do it a second time? Hello, Maxine. Um, there will be, um, 
the workbook pages will be available to print to class attendees so that you can print extra pages and keep practicing because honestly, that's the best way to get better at any, any technique is to practice. Um, but I will tell you that the workbook being shipped out for the near future is going to be the only way to be part of the class. So it won't just be a digital download. Um, so even those of you that are international, it'll, st I still want to ship you the workbook. Um, hello, Helen. Thank you. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> Brian is um, working on class kits for my art retreat. So she said, currently stamping my heart out. So I might miss a link. You're allowed to list, miss a link, Miss Brianne. Hello, Shari. Good morning. I was just chatting with about you, about how we started Get Cracking on Christmas. All right. Yay. Okay. So here we are, get cracking on Christmas. And I am using some really fun Newton's Nook supplies again. Again, I love Newton's Nook. Newton's Nook has actually a little fun fact. They have been a sponsor of every single art retreat I've ever done. Like even the olden days when they were in person in my 900 square foot apartment, um, Newton's Nook, Lawn Fawn, and Hero Arts. I think, and Simon Says Stamp are the four companies, and Ranger are the five companies. I'm just thinking really quickly. Yeah, I don't think I'm missing any. Those are the five. Lawn Fawn, Newton Snook, Simon Says Stamp, Hero Arts, and Ranger have sponsored every single one of my art retreats in person and um, virtual. And I love, love, love um, Jennifer's art artwork that she does um, for Newton Snook. I obviously love all the kitties um, because I love to color them to look like my kitties. Um, but if you've been around a while, you guys know I'm a sucker for all things snowmen. So I thought this was such a cute set um, where he's holding the sign and you can kind of put in whatever you want on the sign. And then I realize I had this really fun plaid stencil that I got from them that I haven't used yet as well. So we're going to combine both things today to create this fun holiday card. And I went with some blues and some purples. Purple, 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 you guys. I'm embracing the purple. You guys are rubbing off on me. Um, and I kind of did more wintry colors and not necessarily those traditional holiday colors. But again, you guys know I am a more non-traditional holiday color girl. So let's go ahead and get started. And I've already stamped and die cut the main image from that stamp set. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And I used Lawn Fawn River Rock. And this is an ink pad that is alcohol marker friendly. It also is great for watercoloring as well. Um, and what I like about it is when I do things like snowmen, it's just a subtle stamped line. It's not so harsh like a black stamped line would be. Um, so I do this a lot for snow things, um, and it's just kind of a fun reminder. So River Rock is a great one for snow, and then Lawn Fawn also has Crunchy Leaf that I like to use um, all different times, but also mainly in the fall. And then Lawn Fawn also has Jellyfish, which is like a no-line coloring. And again, all these inks are just like they're jet black, where they're alcohol marker friendly, but they are also good for watercoloring as well. So I pinned a comment at the top of the video, and that has a link to my blog post where all the supplies are linked if you're enabled uh, to want any of these fun supplies feel free to check it out. I was excited to see, um, obviously you can go directly to Newton's Nook and purchase these supplies, but also um, Simon Says Stamp does have these in stock as well. 
All right. Yeah, Shari said that we were next to Newton's Nook at Create, which was the event that Simon Says Stamp just did, and she said she loves them. Um, I think I had texted you, Shari, and asked you to give Jen a hello for me. I saw you guys were near each other, and I was, like, so bummed I was not at that event, but I was probably sipping pina coladas and looking at my turquoise ocean, so, you know, you can't have it all sometimes. Uh, Brienne says she definitely needs the plaid stencil. And uh, Brienne says, I knew we would bring you to the purple side eventually. <laughs> I'm really just doing it to appease you guys, you know. Um, let's see. Marianne. Hello, Marianne from the Rabbit Hole Designs. She says, I love jellyfish for my no line coloring. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so we are going to start right away with the scarf, the mittens, and the hat. And so I'm going to start right away with my purples. So I'm going to use V15 and V12 Copic markers. And I like to start with the darker color first. And I'm kind of just going to color the plaid of his hat and his scarf. So I'm using that darker purple and I'm just kind of bringing that color up from the bottom of the band on his hat. And then for the scarf, I'm going to just do a little U at the base of the knot on that scarf. And then I'm just going to bring some of that V15 out from the knot on the tails and out from the knot along the neck. All right. Let's see. Oh, good. Shari says that she did say hi to Jen for me. We talked about you in your absence. <laughs> Jen also told me they did a, a Dotson and a raincoat stamp recently, so I guess I'm going to have to check it out. Oh, yes. Jen does Dotsons quite often, actually, Shari, so I'm surprised I didn't share that with you. So now I'm using V12 and I'm blending out the edges of that V15, not coloring in all the white space, just blending the edge of the dark. And I'm gonna work on just the scarf right now and then I'll go back up to the hat. And then I'm gonna fill in with one layer of V12 on whatever's left white. And then while my cardstock is still a little damp from coloring, I'm going to quickly go back to my V15 marker and just put a little bit back in just to kind of build up that definition. I don't do this all the time. It's just if I kind of want a little bit more oomph. And while my cardstock is still damp, you don't always have to go back into the light because it's going to like kind of soak down into the paper. All right. So now I am going to do the hat. So remember I have V15 already here and I'm gonna finish the edge with V12. And because I'm dabbing it a few times to blend, I'm gonna try to leave a little bit of white so that I can have just one layer of the V12 and that will be my lightest area. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that with one little swoop. And then while my cardstock's still damp, I'm just gonna go back in with my V15 just to add a little more definition. All right, super cute. And then we are gonna go ahead and do the mittens. So the first time I colored this, I actually kind of didn't see the mitten over here around the board. So I'm not gonna miss that this time. I'm gonna put a little shadow with V15, and then I'll put a little shadow near the cuff of the mitten. And then on the cuff of the mitten, I'm gonna do a thin line of V15 on the left and the right. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my V12, blend the edge, and finish filling in one layer. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. 
So again, if you hear rustling in the background, Harley is rubbing his face all over the piles of stuff off camera on my desk. And Josie is being so awesome and she's putting away some of my class Copic markers that have been in a bin and not put away for over a year. So thank you, Miss Josie. <laughs> um, and Jack and Gus Gus are actually both in here, which I'm really surprised. They usually leave when I'm live. Gus Gus is in his box sleeping and Jack is on the black kitty mat that I have in my studio sleeping. So everybody's here. It's a party in in my studio. I'm not used to having so much so much activity in my studio when I'm teaching. Uh, Jen says, hi, Mr. Harley, and hi, Josie. Hi. <laughs> um, let's see. Marianne's chatting about her new puppy. I won't, I won't read it out loud, Marianne. I don't want Jack to hear and get jealous. All right, so now that we have the purple colored, what I'm gonna do next is the black top hat. And so for the hat, what I used, oh, and I forgot to show you guys. Remember, anytime I do Copic coloring on a card, on the blog post, I always share the swatch list of the colors that I used. So even if you don't have a lot of Copic markers, or even if you don't have Copic brand alcohol-based markers, having this swatch list, you might be able to find similar colors to use. Um, and then that way you can kind of color something similarly if you want to. Um, so for the top hat, I'm gonna use some of my toner grays that I love. So I'm gonna use T4 and T6. Right here okay so when we are away we obviously have somebody that keeps an eye on the kitties for us but um Gus is pretty good he'll like be seen by the cat sitter but mostly doesn't want to be pet Jack hides right away like runs under the bed so he's never seen and out of all three of our cats, Jack is the most affectionate. He wants the most attention, but he's very nervous around anybody but me or Chris. So I always feel bad leaving Jack. Harley, yeah, he's okay. He'll take, you know, water from the sink from anybody. He'll greet whoever at the door. He's pretty good. Gus honestly wishes he was invisible and nobody ever saw him. So he's okay pretty much too. But I know Jack is probably like when we're away, just craving attention and not able to get it. So when we come home, I'm always like, Jack. And um, he has been such a mush with me lately, like all over me. And um, I love it, but it also makes me feel bad because I know he's like starving for attention. So <laughs> Marianne says, I would come take care of the kitties. I think Jack would approve of her new puppy. She's very cat-like. Um, oh, yay. I'm playing with Penguin Party because I don't have any snowmen. I love it. You don't have any snowmen? Wait a minute. No snowmen? I feel like I need to enable you to fix that. I love snowmen. I can't, it's very rare I can say no to a snowman stamp. All right, so I did T6 on the left and right sides, and now I'm going to go in with T4, and I'm going to just blend out the edges. Keeping some white in the center, so we'll be able to have like a little bit of a top hat highlight. And I almost always just use two colors when I'm blending. So I do think that's a nice, easy approach when you're just learning. Um, and my coloring approach is pretty simple. I wanna keep it simple. I love coloring, but I just don't personally have the patience for it to get too, too involved. Um, so now I'm gonna finish filling in one layer with that T4. 
And again, while my cardstock's still damp, I am gonna go back in with the T6. And this isn't necessarily to add definition, but see this little bit of pushback line that I got? I wanna kind of mask that. And on a top hat, I don't mind seeing a bit of those lines, kind of like the glare lines, you know? So I'm just kind of wisping my marker covering up those pushback lines I got from the previous marker. And it's just kind of, again, adding in a little bit more definition, a little bit more detail. And if I wanna go back with my uh, T4, I can soften those lines. You don't wanna, um, the beauty of alcohol-based markers is you can really build up your layers. So it's not always like a one and done, you know, color something once and then you're done with it. Um, you can really kind of keep going back and forth and um, building up those layers, which is a lot of fun. Um, all right, so I didn't take the snowman class yet, so I haven't gotten any snowmen. All right, I, I'll forgive you then. Bonnie says, what is your opinion on the new Olo markers? Is it just the new thing? Are Copics going away? So um, I do not think Copics are going to go away. Copic markers were a thing long, 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 long before they came into the paper crafting industry. They're an artist grade marker. Um, so they were sold in art stores before they were sold in scrapbooking and stamping stores. So I do not think Copics are going to go away. Um, Olo markers, they are new on the market. So I think with them being new, um, I can tell you Copic markers to me are a lifetime marker. Once you own a Copic marker, um, it's with you for life as long as you take care of it because you can refill it, you can change the tips. Um, most of my markers are well over 15 years old. My class markers, people are kind of hard on those and they've been used in a hard way for over, you know, 12 years. So to me, they're just a lifetime marker. I can guarantee you that it's a good investment. Because Olo markers are new, I can't necessarily tell you, oh, they're going to last forever. They're going to withstand well over time. None of us really know that yet, right? Um, but I can tell you, um, that the Olo markers, I think if you don't have a lot of Copics, I think the price point of Olo markers is really, um, nice. They are less expensive than Copic markers. However, again, there's no known quantity of how long they're going to last. You can refill them. Um, so that's good. You know, you'll, you know, you'll be able to refill them if you use up the ink. I am going to talk a little bit about Olo markers in my Copic class as well. Um, but that's just kind of a quick little snippet of my thoughts. Um, I think if you don't own any Copics and you want to get some alcohol-based markers, that might be a good option. Um, so let's see, uh, Jen's asking me, how do I know where to shadow? So usually I shadow on one side and the crevices. So the left side and the crevices or the right side and the crevices. Um, <clears throat> in this instance, the snowman is facing right. So a lot of the heavy shadow is gonna be on the left and that's gonna show up when I start to do the shadow on his snow. But something like a top hat that has a curve to it, I like to shadow a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right so there's a highlight and that will help make it look like there's a curve. So hopefully that helps. Um, Shari says that the snowman class is pretty awesome, just saying. Yeah, Frosty Friends is a class that Shari and I co-taught together, so I agree, it's pretty awesome. Margo said she just ordered the Copic class and the Newton's Nook snowman greetings and then some Janabler alert. Yay! <laughs> and Jennifer Jackson, again, the owner um, of Newton's Nook is on here and she said, thank you for your order, Margo. Um, so Marianne said, I just wish you could buy replacement caps for the Copics. And I totally hear your frustration for that, Marianne. I know that 
the sketch Copics have been experiencing a problem with cracks in the caps. I will tell you, I don't have a lot of the sketch markers, but most of my sketch markers are well over um, eight, nine years old, and I have not had any problems. And then I'll tell you, my Copic Originals, I've never had a problem with the hairline cracks that some of the sketch markers are finding. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly color um, the carrot nose. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, and I just use, I mean, you guys can use any oranges for this. I just used a little bit of a deeper oranges. So I'm going to use YR18 and YR16. Okay. And so I'm going to start with the um, YR18. And I'm going to do a little bit at the base of the nose and along the bottom. And then I'm going to go in with the YR16, blend out the edge, just dab, 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 and then fill in with one layer. Often with oranges, yellows, pinks, those light colors, I do have to go back in with the dark, but that YR18 is pretty dark, so it held up pretty well, and I don't feel like I need to go back in. Remember, a lot of this is subjective to the look that you're looking for, right? All right, let's go ahead and do our reds. Um, we've got a fun little cardinal on the sign. And we've got a little heart on the hat. So I'm going to my stamps, my favorite red combo, the R29 and the R35. I um, like to have a little bit of a warmer red if I am going to use red. Um, and I am going to start with the R29. Hi, Danielle. Thanks for joining. Hopefully you're able to use this time to catch up on your holiday cards. I know you mentioned you're a little behind. So I'm going to do a little R29 on the belly of the cardinal. I'm going to go along the wing because that's a crevice. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the bottom of the wing. And then we're going to do a little bit coming out from the bum on the tail feathers. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my R35. And the first thing I'm going to do is just work on blending the edge, not coloring the whole image, just along where I did R29. Leaving as much white as I can, right? It gets a little tricky down on that tail feather, but as much as I can. And then I am gonna take the R35, finish filling it in one layer. And there we go. Sometimes I might go back with the R29, but I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way that it looks. And then the little beak on the Cardinal, I'm just using one of my oranges, adding a little orange to the beak. And then around his eye, I did T6. Now this is pretty dark and it is gonna cover his eye completely because I used a gray ink, but I'm gonna go back in and add black lace pen over the eye so it's gonna make it pop again later. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take R29 and I'm going to add a little bit at the base of the heart. My friend Jen is asking if I'll do another Fun Friends card making class. And she's asking me while I'm live so that maybe she'll get the answer she wants to hear. What she forgets is when I'm not working, I wanna do other fun friend adventures, but yes, we will probably do a fun friends card class again someday. Um, 
Yay, Danielle's moving to her desk right now with some Newton's Nook stamps. Woohoo! And remember, you guys, um, feel free to post on social media. Maybe you don't get anything completed today, but maybe you get a little bit of coloring done, a little bit of die cutting done. Feel free to share on social media, and you can use the hashtag get cracking on Christmas. All right, so now I am going to do the snow. So I'm leaving the wood for last because that's not complicated, but there's a few more steps. So we're going to do the snow. And I like to add a little bit of shadow to my snow, give it a little bit of a blue hue. And I'm going to start with BG11, and then we're going to blend it out with the BG0000. Hello, Bradley. We've got another fun friend in the house here. So Bradley is one of my fun friends, Brad. I like to call him Bradley, but he lives up in Boston and him and 27 have a smaller-ish apartment um, in Dorchester. But I tell you, if he had a spare room, he would be card making right now. I just know he would, but 27 would probably kick him out if he started collecting all the craft supplies. Although Brad has been making really cool things out of leather. He's been making like leather wallets and leather um, passport cases. And he just got himself a little crafty table to be able to do that. So I don't know if, I hope 27's not watching, but that little crafty table is a slippery slope, Bradley. You're going to be card making before you know it. Um, all right, so I'm just using that BG11 and I'm adding a little bit of the light teal to some shadow um, along the snowman just to kind of give it a little dimension so it doesn't look so flat. But I also don't want it to kind of be this like harsh line like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the BG0000 and I am going to blend out the edge. And this is a very, very, very light color. So when you first do this, it kind of looks like a hot mess because it's wetting your paper. So you start doing it and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I do? This looks horrible. But then once it dries and it settles, because once the alcohol evaporates and your paper dries, the coloring looks a lot lighter. And with a light color like this, it won't look so wet and it won't look so drastic. So kind of don't, don't be too scared. Again, practice, just paper. But um, doing this kind of technique with a lighter marker like this can kind of freak you out a little bit. But you'll see on my card here, right? It looks super cute and smooth and soft. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Brianne says, when I'm not working. <laughs> I, I don't work on vacation, Brianne. I proved that. And Marianne said, Jen is mermaiding when not working. Love the ocean sounds from her Insta story so, so much. Ah, thanks, Marianne. I love sharing the ocean with you guys. Shari says, Brad, you can just go to Jen's house when you want to make cards. I hear she has all the things. <laughs> Brad says, I got to get cracking on Christmas. I love it. You guys are so funny. All right. So let's see, the last thing I wanna do before the wood is I wanted to kind of mimic the um, blue and purple plaid that I'm gonna be doing in the background. So I'm gonna kind of add some blue color to, um, to my plaid on my scarves. So for that, what I did, I'm just grabbing the colors that I used. So what I did is I kind of used three blues. I probably could get away with just two, um, but you'll kind of see what I'm going to do as I as I do it. So I'm using B97, B34, and B41. So I'm going to take the B97, and I'm going to just follow the lines. What's great about 
you know, stamps is if you're not artistic, like Jennifer Jackson, who draws the artwork for Newton's Nook, you can utilize the details that they've done for us, right? So she's added this plaid detail to the scarf already. So I'm just very thinly tracing these plaid lines. Now it's tricky, you wanna have a very, very light hand so it stays nice and thin. I'm just using the very pointy tip of my marker and I'm just adding a little bit of B97. Um, this is a nice, really dark, rich uh, navy color. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the plaid on the hat. Very thin, and it's okay if it's not super straight right now. We're gonna smooth it out a little bit. So if it looks a little choppy, um, that is totally okay, all right? Um, Marianne says, Shari, I wanna go to Jen's house to visit Jack. I feel like that should say, Marianne, I wanna go to Jen's house to steal Jack, right? All right, so now I'm gonna take B34, and I'm gonna go over those same lines, and this is gonna thicken them up a little bit. This is why I was so careful to do it very thinly. And it's gonna kind of smooth it out. So if they seemed choppy, this is gonna kind of smooth that out. And I'm just going over each line again. And then on the lines on the mittens, I'm gonna do just that B34. I didn't do B97, I just did the B34 because it's kind of a smaller area. And then the last thing I am going to do is I'm gonna take this B41, which is a very, very light color. And I'm gonna go over the lines again, but what I'm trying to do is kind of go a little bit on the right side and a little bit on the left side. And what this is doing is smoothing out the edge, but it's also kind of um, taking away a little bit of that purple right near the plaid lines. It might not be something that's showing up well on the video, um, but whenever I have cards posted on my website, you guys, I do detail shots. So I really encourage you guys after this live, um, or if you're watching on replay, you can pop on over to my blog post and you'll see these details up more closely. Um, and... Yeah, so the link is pinned at the top of the chat and then it's also in the um, description of the video as well. So definitely check that out. Again, if you're watching me live, don't leave me now. You can check it out after, but you'll see kind of those details. Um, and then while I'm at it, I always forget to mention, I would love, love, love if you give this video a little thumbs up. And then also just make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so that you'll know when I have new videos I'm sharing with you. All right. So we've got the plaid done. We've got the snowman done. We've got the cardinal done. So now we are going to work on our wood. So I am going to be using three browns. I'm going to be using E23, E21, and E51. Um, Marion says, I can't say that. Too many witnesses. But yeah, Jack might come home if he refuses to get out of the luggage in the carry-on. Um, and then I have a question. Do you ever find color choice frustrating? So I think in my early days of coloring with Copic markers, I did find, you know, color choices frustrating. Um, but honestly, the more that I color, I just reuse the same color choices. Um, I do have free printables on my website where you can um, print them for free on your favorite cardstock to color with Copics. And, you know, when you find a color combo you like, stamp out the stamped image on this printable, mark out the color combo, 
and keep a book. Put them in your Creative Chick resource binder or keep a binder and keep them so you can refer back to them. Like maybe this, these three browns are not a color combo you've ever used before. Maybe you want to remember it. So you kind of add that to your Copic color chart that I share. Again, free printables on my website. Um, because you guys will find... I've been coloring with Copics for a wicked long time, but I use the same color combos a lot, a lot, a lot. And something else I always do is I always have like little pieces of extra cardstock nearby. If I'm not sure something is gonna blend well or work, I kind of use those extra pieces, you know, and do just um, a little bit of test coloring and say, oh, okay, is this gonna work? Is this blending okay? Is this looking the way I want it to look? And then I dive into my image. And I do that a lot, a lot, a lot. You guys just don't see that. You guys see my finished product, right? All right, so, oops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start with E51, the lightest of the three browns. And I'm going to just fill in this whole sign. But I really just kind of want to make sure I'm only doing it one layer because I don't want it to get um, darker and darker. So I'm just swooping down and swooping up one layer of E51, okay? Just to kind of put a base down. Thank you, Miss Brianne, for linking up the printables. Um, Marion says, to all, Jen has a list of essential Copics and her guides, and the class is the best. Thank you, Miss Marianne. Um, so I have a Copic 101 blog post that's free. It's not a paid class, and I share my top 50 Copic markers that I think are great to start with, and I share my favorite two-color blends. So those are always great to look at. Um, and then in my online Copic class, again, that's available to sign up now, um, you get my most used Copic list and we're going to talk about favorite blends and things like that in the class. All right, so I'm going to take E23 and I am going to make some wood grain. So again, we already have some lines on this wood, so I'm going to go ahead and just trace over those. I wanna have a very light hand, so these are very thin lines, they're not thick. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start with those. And then I'm going to just kind of fill in and do different lengths um, and add more or less or whatever you want. It's your wood, right? Doesn't all have to look the same. I do short lines, long lines, lines close together, lines far apart, all right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my E21 marker and I'm gonna go ahead and do thin lines but trace over my E23 lines. And this is gonna kind of blend these two colors together so they look less like lines and more like grooves in the wood. And I'm kind of going over each line a couple times just to get that paper saturated so the colors will um, blend together. Okay, super cute. Now I could totally leave it like this and I thought about that when I made my original card, but I decided I wanted to add a little bit of shadow along that left side. I just wanted a little bit more definition. So now that we have our wood lines, the wood grain um, marked out, I'm gonna use that E23 and I'm gonna do a very thin line along the right side, around the mitten, and down the board, okay? And then I'm gonna take that E21, but as I take the E21, I actually, zoom out just a little bit, I actually wanna kind of, I'm blending the edge, right? I'm swiping along the edge, but I'm also gonna pull my color out. So I blend along the edge, and then just pull out. Again, just getting that 
shadow. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to take the E51 and I'm going to blend by pulling on that edge. Just kind of softens it. Now again, this is going to make the cardstock look wet and it's going to look a little, maybe not as smooth or nice as you want, but let things evaporate so you can see the results after. All right, so that's how I did the wood. So cute, right? So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a sentiment to stamp on here. There's all kinds of fun ones. Um, on my first card, I did Snow One Else Like You, but this time I think I'll do, I think I'm gonna do a Snowflake and a Hello Winter. It's got like a fun snowflake and the little hello winter. So I'm going to grab an acrylic block. I could use my Misty if I wanted to, but when I'm stamping sentiments and little things, I like to kind of just use um, an acrylic block. I'm more comfortable with that. And I'm going to stamp with Versafine Onyx Black. So we're going to stamp hello winter. And I think I'm gonna stamp it down low and put the snowflake above it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that. So cute. And of course I forgot to wet my stamp chamois. So I'm gonna just stamp it off. And then I'm gonna take the smaller of the two, or I don't know, maybe I'll use the bigger. I'm gonna use the bigger snowflake. No, that's okay. Thank you, Josie. She was just offering to wet my stamp chamois. It's all good. Real life crafting here. And then I did the little snowflake. So I like that. So, and I love when a set comes with some different options. So you can kind of switch it up if you wanted to make multiple cards. Thank you, Miss Brienne, for all the links. I really appreciate it. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set this aside and we are gonna work on our background. So for the background, I use the Newton's Nook plaid stencil. It's um, a two part stencil. <laughs> um, and I'm gonna use the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station, my favorite, favorite, favorite tool to use when stenciling. And I like to just use a little bit of the Tombow Removable Adhesive, and I just add a few little lines of it to the back of my cardstock. This is Distress White Heavy Stock, my favorite cardstock to use for any ink blending. And that's just gonna kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna have magnets to hold my stencil in place, but I like to just give a little bit of reinforcement to the background. I am gonna add black to all of those things, um, Jen, after. It takes a little bit of to dry, so I'm gonna do it once the card is all assembled. Hello, Kathy, thanks for joining us, I appreciate it. Oh, you know what I forgot? That's Gus Gus in the background, if you heard that. But I need to do a light ink blending on here before we do our stenciling. So I am going to drop things on the floor, but I'm gonna grab my ink stand and we are gonna do just a nice little light dusting of Blueprint Sketch um, on to the background. And my tabletop is made out of glass. If you have not ink blended on glass yet, I highly recommend it. So you might not have a whole tabletop of glass, but getting some sort of glass mat, it's like the Cadillac of ink blending. It really makes your ink blending go on so much smoother. I tap off a little bit of ink. You guys, um, behind my face is what I'm doing over there. And I'm just bringing the color in. And again, I want this to stay really nice and light just a little dusting of color. 
All right. My feet on my inkstand are dirty. They're dirty, dirty. So I am going to use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on my table to clean the ink off my glitter all the things flower sackcloth and then I'm just gonna wipe my feet on my ink stand so that they'll cling to the table better. So you guys might have missed it but my glitter all of the things flower sackcloths are available now. Of course yours won't be all inky like this when you get it and it is really hard to ink it up the first time um, but my friend Josie own, does a little side gig business and does some really cute stuff and she custom made these for me. So those are available in my shop now. All right, so we're gonna go back to that Make Art Station. Remember I have that removable adhesive on the back. It's just enough to kind of hold it in place a little bit. And we are gonna start stenciling. So it's a two-part stencil. I'm gonna start with the one with the skinny lines. And it doesn't like I don't it doesn't matter where I put this on, but I'm not going to cover my whole background. See how I dusted up and kind of let it trail off? I want my stenciling to happen just below that. So what I am going to do when I put my stencil down is take note that I'm only one square over over here on the left because when I put my second stencil down I'm going to want it to be in the same positioning so that the plaid will line up. Let's see I got the Make Art Station on one of your uh, Genablers and absolutely love it. Awesome I love that Helen. Monique says, no snowmen for me today. She's prepping for a class tomorrow. Yes, I have my so amazing class tomorrow. I haven't done an all day live class in a while, so I'm so excited to do that. All right, so we're going back to that blueprint sketch. And this time when I ink blend, um, I'm gonna start off gentle, but I really wanna have these lines be nice and dark and bold. However, I'm not gonna worry about filling it all the way to the top of the stencil. I'm gonna kind of let things um, gradually ink off, okay? So that's why I'm not even putting any post-it tape up at the top because I'm not even going that far up where I'm worried I'm gonna get a line up there. I'm just making sure that these lines are going to be um, nice and bold. I love blueprint sketch. It's such a pretty, pretty blue. I'm using regular distress ink because of the translucent properties of it. Um, with oxide, you probably would have a hard time getting a light dusting of the ink on the background and then doing a bold inking of a stencil like this. You can most certainly try and you might like the results and there's no problem with that. But Distress Oxides have some pigment properties in the inks, so you don't have as much of a translucent property that you get with dye inks. So that's why I chose to use regular Distress um, in this case. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and take my stencil off. Right, we've got a little bit of plaid happening, and I'm gonna bring in my second stencil Again, I'm making sure the words are upright and facing me, and I'm gonna have this edge of the stencil one square over on the left. I'm gonna get that in place, put my magnets down to hold it, and now I'm gonna use um, Wilted Violet. And what you guys can't see, I'll kind of hold it up off camera, I've got all my blending brushes in this Layer Cake blending brush caddy, which I love, and I put it on a four inch Lazy Susan, so it spins and it makes it so easy for me to just grab whichever blending brush I want, and it doesn't take up a ton of space um, on my site, so, I mean, on my table. And I do carry the blender brush caddies on my website. All right. So I'm going in with the Wilted Violet. 
I'm gonna layer up that ink, get it as dark as I would like. I think you guys might have seen my post. Uh, Ranger is bringing some distress paints back from the vault. They had retired some colors, but they're bringing them back for a short time. And one of the colors is Wilted Violet, which I was so sad when they um, retired that paint color because it is a good purple. And I still had a little bit of mine left, but I was like, ooh, I didn't really want to use it on projects if you guys can't order it. And so it's nice that it's back now. So definitely check that out. And I shared my fun marbling technique with the Distress Paints. Um, Wild Honey is another one of the colors that was retired. And Festive Berries. Those are all colors that I use so much and I love them. So I'm stocking up, stocking up on the paints. All right. So we've got Wilt of Violet done. See how pretty? Yay. All right. So I'm going to do a quick clean of my stencils and my station. So what I do is I have the isopropyl alcohol in a mini mister. I spritz and then I can just do a quick wipe with my flour sack cloth. Cleans everything up super easy. This is how I always clean my stencils when I'm using ink. Pastes is a whole nother story. You'll want to get those in water right away, but inks, this is a nice, quick and easy way to clean up. All right. Let's see. Danielle says the caddy is the best. I have two now. I have um, three, <laughs> uh, Danielle. So yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Shari's impressed with me for using my grid, right? Lining all the things up. Um, I need a Brienne or a Jen to text me the reminder to use my grid lines when lining up layered stencils. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yay, Helen ordered some of the paints. I love it, I love it. All right, so now what we are going to do is I'm just gonna rub off my removable adhesive off the back of this background. Right, and then I am going to trim this panel down. And I trimmed it down, I don't remember the measurement, so I'm just measuring. Um, I did four by uh, four and a half, four by four and a half. So we are going to trim that up. And I'm gonna take a little bit off of the left and the right. I could just do one side, but I don't know. I'm just used to doing a little bit off of all the sides, so. And then we want this to be um, four and a half. So I am going to do, this would be four and a half. So I'm gonna do most of it off the bottom. And then I'll flip and change a little bit off the top. Okay. And then what we are going to do is use the Distress Texture Paste in Opaque. Um, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use a palette knife and I am going to just spread and manipulate the paste to look like snow. This is about as close to frosting anything I get. I do not bake. I barely cook. Although Josie and I have been making home fresh meals this week. Honestly, it's more fun making them with somebody. So it was fun doing it with her, but it's just not my jam cooking but we had fun doing it um and so i am just going to spread this along the ground 
so that I have a little snow for my snowman. Just kind of a fun, this texture paste, there's so many things you guys can do with it. I do have an online class with the Distress Sprays and Stains and Mediums where we play with these. But, and I'm gonna just put this palette knife, I have a cup of water off camera, I'm just sticking it in there so that it won't dry on there. But now we've got a fun little snowy ground, all right? And so I'm gonna just set this aside to dry. But what I did ahead of time, cooking show style, is I already have a background dry and ready to use. Um, Shari says, I ordered the paints, fell victim to Jen's enabling. Oops. Sandra says, question, do you think you will ever have a distressed paint class? The answer to that, Sandra, is probably, I have lots of distress classes I wanna teach. Um, one of the really cool things about my friend Josie starting to help me is I'm hoping it'll um, open up some time for me to be able to offer more classes. Uh, Jen says, could you also use mica flakes for snow? Look at Jen dropping the, dropping the paper crafting terms. Yes, I could press some mica flakes into the snow for sure. Um, Margo says, what else can you use to make snow? Oh gosh, Margo, anything. You, there's um, liquid applique. There's, you could use your glue tube and use chunky glitter. You could use glossy accents and use Prisma glitter. There's a bunch of different snow things out there to do. All right, so this one is already dry. So what we're going to do is add it to a card base. But I wanted to add a little color to my card base. So I'm going to add a little bit of wilted violet to all the edges. Marianne's suggesting puff paint for snow. That's a fun idea. But you guys can see when you're ink blending from glass to paper, it's so smooth. There's no like harsh edge. You have to start way off on the glass and bring the ink into it. Um, but it's just a nice, soft blend. All right. So now what we are gonna do, I'm gonna just peek at my sample, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So we are gonna adhere this background to the card. And so the way that I wanted this is, I wanted it to be shorter than the background because the snowman's hat is gonna, gonna kind of pop off the frame. And I really just liked the way that looked. So we're gonna center this at the bottom. Okay. Bring our snowman back in. Of course, we are going to uh, glitter all of the things. I cannot, cannot do holiday cards without glittering. I mean, let's be honest, I can hardly do any cards without glittering, but definitely always glitter on holiday cards. So I'm using my beloved Quickie glue pen. And I actually was pretty subtle with the glitter on this card. I'm actually just gonna trace the shadow of the snow on the sign. This is Lawn Fawn Prisma glitter in a big container so that glitter doesn't go everywhere. And I'm tracing the snow piles on the ground. 
and that's it. See, sometimes you don't need to glitter all the things. Um, you know, you don't got, need to go crazy, but just a little bit goes a long way. Marianne says, I'm breaking the internet by using a card base. I know, I'm trying to be better about using card bases, you guys. Josie is gonna be adding more cards for charity on my website, more of my handmade cards for sale. And I kind of had to apologize over and over because one of the steps is she has to put so many of my cards on card bases. I'm like, sorry, love you, don't hate me. But I am trying to be better about putting cards on card bases. 2023, that was like, I don't really do resolutions per se, but it's kind of a resolution. I'm doing my best. That's all you can do, right? Just do your best. But last year for uh, holiday cards, as I shipped them out to people, I was running a little late getting them in the mail. And so many of my holiday cards didn't have card bases. So I just said, well, we're starting a new trend this year. Everybody's getting a card front in an envelope, pretty much like a holiday postcard in an envelope. <laughs> I just laugh at myself. But hey, people still enjoyed them, right? All right. So I added my snowman on the card with foam squares. I, again, I love how his little top hat is kind of popping off the frame like that. And then what I wanted to do is just I wanted to add a few snowflakes over here on the right side. So I'm going to grab the two snowflakes that come in the stamp set. I'm going to put one on one side of my acrylic block and the other on the other side of my acrylic block. Now, I'm not going to stamp with my regular Distress ink because those do not stamp very well. They're not meant to. But this is a great time to use the coordinating oxide because of those pigment properties it stamps a little bit um nicer so i'm just making sure that yeah the black ink is not going to show up okay so i'm just going to take that um distress oxide and i'm just going to stamp a few little snowflakes here and there to kind of fill in this space And I'm just kind of flipping my block around and switching up what one I'm stamping. Okay. And then the last thing that we are going to do is we're going to add a little bit of the Sakura black glaze pen um, to the snowman. Now this black lace pen always tends to get a little bit of a film on the tip of the pen. It's not clogged. I just kind of roll it so that that film comes off. And what I did is I gently filled in the snowman's eyes because even though they're in a cute little shape, I'm assuming they're still coal pieces, right? We're gonna do a little dot on the cardinal's eye. That's really gonna make that detail pop. And then I'm gonna fill in his coal buttons. The glaze pen does take a little bit of time to dry, um, so just be gentle with that. And it's kind of, um, the, glue, uh, the black glaze pen comes out a little bit heavy, so I would never try to trace a thin line like his mouth, I'm just gonna leave it because it'll just end up looking very blurred and not cute. Trust me from uh, my mistakes. All right, and now I'm gonna just take a little bit of glossy accents and I'm gonna put it on the heart on this hat. I love to use the baby glossy accents bottle. It doesn't um, bubble as much, it doesn't clog. I keep it stored upside down in my glue tube holder and we will just set that aside to dry, but I'm gonna bring in my original card. So let's see if we can get that. Yeah, there's that glossy accents. You can see that shine. You can see the Cardinal's eye, the glitter, the buttons, the texture paste has a little bit of everything, yet it's not an overly complicated card. 
it's really quite fun, I must say. Uh, Margo says, I've done a great job using my card bases in 2023. Thank you. We're four months in. I can do it. Uh, I just got a stencil drying rack and get to use it for the first time. Yay. Behind my teal rainbow that's over my shoulder here, I have my stencil drying rack that I use all the time when I have to clean my stencils with water. This is totally your color card, Jen. Yes, Jen Nickerson. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for sh joining me. Oh, I just saw Kathy's comment. Yeah, Snowfall Grit Paste is another great thing to use for snow. And Brianne's so impressed by my use of purple. So thank you guys. So happy Get Kraken on Christmas. Remember, I almost always post my card on the third Thursday of the month. I did not do that this month because I was on vacation, but I post my card on the third Thursday of the month, and on that blog post, I share with you when I'm going to go live. That day and time changes depending on my schedule. Um, and use this time, plan to join me live or even on replay and start working on your holiday cards. I would love if you guys share um, on social media what you're working on, even the in-process photos. Use that hashtag, get cracking on Christmas. Feel free to tag me as well. I always love to see what you guys are working on. Uh, you can join my Facebook group and share your work in there as well. Um, lots of fun, lots of fun. So hopefully I'll see some of you guys tomorrow in my So Amazing class. And then next weekend is Copic 101. I cannot wait. I'm wicked excited. And I hope to see you guys in a class soon. Thank you. Yay. Good job, Andrea. She finished four Christmas cards. Look at that. You're already on your way. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Have a happy 